Hello everybody, let's finish the coffee table. I've got some more cherry and I made this template from thin plywood to be able to somewhat nest the parts in the board. There is a lot of waste with shapes like this, but I saved most of the offcuts. I'll be able to use them for small carving projects. Then I sawed all the straight lines with regular hand saws. and brought out the turning saw for the curves. It's slow going in this thick material, but I'm finding it surprisingly easy to stick to the line. I could remove some waste now and then to make room for the saw frame and continue the cuts. Next step is to mark out the joinery and I decided to go for a big single dovetail here as it will give a lot of strength against the torque that the weight of the table will exert on this connection. I used the bench top as my reference surface to get the shoulders vertical since the legs themselves have no straight sides. With the shoulder drawn on all sides I found the rough center and drew my dovetail shape. So with that done, let's make the column that the legs will join to. I want to make it octagonal, so I'll need a 22.5 degree angle on all sides. To make for less planing and save material, I marked that out in the rough cut stage so the parts already are close to final shape. Then I cut them to length. This is a low table, so these parts are not very long. I flattened the outside face to use as a reference. A lot of this will get carved away later, but I need the flatness for joinery and to measure the angles too. When I was satisfied with what the winding sticks showed, I set up my bevel gauge to 22 and a half and started working on the sides. They have to end up straight, parallel and at the correct angle, but the width of the part must also end up right, so there is a finite amount of tweaking that can be done. In theory it's just the same as making a square edge, but because there's 8 parts with 16 sides that have to come together, tiny errors can accumulate into massive gaps. This is probably the most demanding thing I've done in woodworking and it took a good few tries. I had to make them a smidge narrower than planned, but in the end they came together in what felt like some sort of personal triumph of accuracy.
When clamping a volatile shape like this, it's important to apply very light pressure at first until you can crank down on all clamps at once, otherwise parts get pushed out. The tape helped, but it's not strong enough on its own for something with this much glue surface. At least I wasn't able to pull the seams tight without some help from the trusted inclined plane. A little bit of post glue up smoothing. And then I could try to balance a square on this thing to get the ends cut off. We're past the need for total accuracy here and it just needs to not be obviously uneven to the eye. Then it was time to cut the other half of the dovetail joints. I used some tape to make the scribe lines easier to see and centered the legs on the column's facets. I can't saw all the way down as the other side of the column gets in the way, but I'll go as far down as I can and then I used a bit and brace to cut through. Chopping out the waist could work too, but you'd have to support the fibers on the inside of the hollow column somehow, otherwise there's huge blowout. Don't ask me how I know. But boring is always fun and worked nicely, leaving just a few fibers to sever and clean up. Then I have to let in the tabletop beams into the other end of the column. For whatever reason I didn't film when I marked the location of these cuts, but I just put the column down in the center and made knife nicks and then extended those into layout lines with square and marking gauge. Here I could saw all the way down, effectively cutting two sockets at once, so this was quite a bit faster. quick chamfer to make the assembly easier and this stuff was done. Dry fitting the column to the tabletop made me feel like this central half lap joint needed some reinforcing so I planed up a little pyramid shaped length of pine and cut it into four glue blocks. I sized them so they wouldn't block the screws attaching the beams and apron to the top, in case someone needs access to them in the future. Next up, I laid out the curve I want to cut into each facet of the pedestal. I decided how deep it should be at the vertex, and used a thin strip of wood bent between two stops to draw a shallow arc. I still felt the need to tweak it freehand a little bit. Then I marked a few points to measure the depth at and transferred them to the column. By making saw curves here to the depth measured on the drawing, each curve should look quite similar to its neighbors. You could certainly cut this by hand, with the depths marked on the saw plate to know when to stop, but cutting to a precise depth is something a circular saw excels at, so I took this opportunity for efficiency and knocked out this step with some electric assistance. Then with the curves sewn, it's just a matter of connecting the dots with chisel and mallet. 
It's pretty cool how much the visual impression of the part changes with this step, from clunky to something that possibly could be called elegant. I rounded out the curves with a spoke shave, trying to make the facets neat at the blue lines, and smoothed them with card scraper. Alright, going back to the legs, it's time to shape them. I marked the width and used a veneer offcut as a flexible straight edge and then used the saw curve technique again, but this time by hand. I'm not making a flat surface here, it's actually twisted, going from vertical at the dovetail shoulder to slightly slanted at the foot. I think this makes the leg appear a bit more slim and graceful, but I might be imagining. The feet will be carved as scrolls, like on a violin. I think this shape is a challenge just to visualize. I definitely overestimated my ability to freehand draw a beautiful spiral, but somehow all my saw cuts stopped at the right lines, so I didn't mess up too badly, I think, though they are not fit for a violin. <laughs> Apparently, this detail is called pied d'escargot in French furniture speak, which means snail feet. I like that. Now I just need to round over the top of the leg, transitioning from flat at the dovetail shoulder to softly pillowed and then completely rounded at the foot. Mostly a job for spoke shapes, but also required some file work where they can't get all the way up to the foot, and then smoothing with card scraper. So with that, the legs are done, the column is done, let's get it assembled. I used polyurethane glue for this to make these large joints slide together more easily. You could probably leave it without clamps to be honest, but I always feel weird doing that so I put a strap around the legs to sort of hold them. I really don't think it actually did anything though. With winding sticks I checked if the feet were level, and when they were, I left it to dry. Now I just have to lock the pedestal to the tabletop, in a detachable way. I decided to go for a couple of screws through the pine beams. They don't really pull anything together, they serve more as pins in this application. There's a bit of flex, I think it's okay, but if you know of a different method to fasten a column to a top, please feel free to share. As final prep for finish, I lightly sanded everything with 600 grit. I prefer to leave the hand plane surface, but as you may remember from part 2, I had to sand the molding to get that smooth, and I also couldn't avoid it on the scrolls. So to have the finish go on consistently, I sanded the rest as well and wiped the dust off with mineral spirits. Then it's Osmo time. 
The person this table is for asked for a glossy, durable finish, but not one that puts a synthetic film over the wood, so I think this will be a good compromise between natural feel, sheen and protection. I tried Osmo's own application pads this time, and I like how they push the finish into the wood and make it go a really long way, but I also had some fibers getting stuck here and there, and they're pretty coarse and noticeable. I think I'd like to try wrapping one of these pads with cloth next time, make a sort of French polishing style pillow, although that would lose some of the dexterity the pad gives on carvings, where the sharp corners really do help. Anyway, I did three coats of this spread out over three days, and then it was a nice sunny day, so I took the parts outside to buff the finish with a piece of heavy brown paper. And that's a wrap on this elliptical pedestal table from cherry and pine with reclaimed mahogany veneer, birch and mahogany inlay and hard wax oil finish. Thank you for watching.